Hello and welcome to this week's video and in this week's video we're gonna go from this an old black rifle to this a black and green two-tone rifle Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Farah and in this week's video we're gonna talk about your paint job that is coming or that you are planning in the future. Or you just wanna know how I did my two-tone paint job. And I'm going to show you what techniques that I used to get from an old black rifle to a two-tone rifle. But you can also use this for multiple colors. Uh, it's the same way, you just use more colors. Now before I start explaining the process that I use to paint my rifle, there are two different kinds of ways to paint your rifle. The first one is just drop your rifle on any surface and you take your spray can and you spray all over it and you just make it less black so it doesn't stand out as much in the forest anymore. Now the other option is to take it all apart and paint the parts that you want in a different color and that is the way that I did it. And in my opinion, that is the way you get the nicest result. But if you just want to paint your rifle because it stands out too much in the woodland environment, the first method will totally do for your purposes. But if you want to really get in there and paint the smallest details on your rifle, uh, it's better to take it apart and use the option two that I used in this video. And in this process, there are five steps that you need to take. There is one, take your rifle apart. Two, clean it. Three, paint it. Four, put it back together and five maybe additional paints. And now let's get in a little bit more depth in every step. Now in this video I'm using the ICS ARC because I have been using this rifle for over a year and it was time to change it up a little bit. The first year I want to use it as standard as possible the way ICS gives it to me uh, but now it's time to change it up a little bit and it was time for a paint job. But before you start painting your gun it's really important to do some research on what you want because once you painted it yes you can repaint it but that's a lot of work. For me, I always liked the green and black color scheme on the ICS ARC. Now I got the all black version, so now it was time to get it black and green. Now in the standard green and black version of ICS, all the plastic parts are green and all the metal parts are black. And I wanted to do it the other way around and now all the metal parts are green and all the plastic parts are black. So first thing you do is you take your gun completely apart. Now it's important to, if you do that, take pictures, take a video, uh, put your screws in the right order so if you have to assemble it again, you know which every part is going. Now you take the rifle apart as small as possible because every little uh, corner that you can't paint will not look as good as if you could take it apart and spray paint all the sides of that little part. Because some parts will be bolted together or will be glued together. You don't have to break them. If you have parts that you don't want to paint, but they are like stuck together with glue or bolts or you just can't remove the parts, you just put masking tape over it and that will make sure that you don't paint over the stuff that you don't want to paint. I decided not to paint the screws because I like the effect that you have some black screws on a, a green surface. And I also made the decision to not paint all the metal parts green like this little part here. I wanted to keep it black just to have some contrast between the black and the green. But that's totally up to you. That's why you have to do that um, prep work before you start painting it and know where you want to go with your rifle. The next step is clean every part that you have. Like, in this part you already separated all the parts that you want to paint and the parts that you don't want to paint and then you took all the parts that you want to paint you took them in a different room so you can make them ready for painting and cleaning them will make sure that one you remove all the dirt that is on the rifle from playing with it and two you will make the surface ready to accept the paint because if everything is greasy the paint will not stick to your metal and that will cause that the paint will start uh, chipping off. One thing that I did not do but that you can do if you have like bigger surfaces is sand it down a little bit so the paint will even stick better to the surface. Now there are so many details and small cuts and holes that I didn't want to sand it down because I was not going to be able to do it the right way. If you're done cleaning with everything make sure that everything is dry to be ready to be painted. And now we come to the painting part and as you can see painting is only one part of the painting process of your rifle because you have to do some stuff before and some stuff after. So in the painting process don't rush it, take your time for it and make sure that you give it enough time to dry and completely dry. Now when you have all the parts laid out on your surface where you're going to paint and make sure that you can get to your uh, pieces with your spray can in almost every angle. Now make sure that if you spray your parts that you do it in like really light 
coats. Just go over it, go over it, go over all the parts, let it dry. Wait a few hours, check your parts, spray it again, wait again. Do that three to four times, depending on how easily you can get to all surfaces, and then wait a little bit longer. Go to your bed, and the next day you can continue. Now the pieces will be drier, and you will be able to pick them up without your fingerprints showing on the paint, and then you can see what parts you still have to paint. Then put them in a different order, maybe turn them around a little bit, and spray paint them again. I did another three coats on a different angle. If I had a piece that was already really well done, I just put it aside so I knew I don't have to spray paint that one again three times. But most of the parts I had to do six or seven or even eight uh, layers of really thin layers of spray paint. So take your time to make sure that you hit every spot on your rifle. After all the pieces have been painted and that process took you two days, um, there is an option to varnish your rifle or all the pieces. I chose not to do that because I like I don't like the look of that. And I know you have some different kinds of varnishes, but I just like how my rifle get damaged when it's used or I put it in my bag and there are scratches on it. It's just the way how I like my rifle to look. After you painted everything and everything is dried out for another day, it's ready to put it all back together again. And I hope you remember the first part where I told you to take some pictures or videos or at least put every screw in the location that you know what screw it is used for. So I can understand that not everybody knows where all the pieces have to go if this is the first time you take it apart completely. So that's why the pictures and the videos is really important to get it back together. And while we're putting this back together, you will notice that there will be some scratches on my paint because I didn't protect the paint as much as I could with the varnish. Uh, but I don't mind. I like the way it looks with the scratches on it. So I can just put it all back together and afterwards it will look scratched up a little bit, but that's totally fine. Now notice that if you are putting this back together and you painted some surfaces that connect into each other, that because of the paint, those connection parts might be too small now. And then you have to remove some paint so the surfaces can really connect again and you can assemble this really easily. There was one part here in the middle that I had to remove the paint to make sure that everything fits nicely together again. And when you're done putting it all together and you have no pieces left, that means that you did a good job on putting everything together again. Now when I put everything back together, I didn't really like how it looked. And that's why I said it's really important to do some research and maybe try some Photoshop on your rifle. Just take a picture, put some colors on your rifle to see how it looks like. And I didn't like the green, like the big green blob in the middle. It was a little bit too greenish and I wanted to change it a little bit. So what I did, I took it all apart again. Uh, well, I took all the plastic parts of it again because I wanted to do some pattern on the green parts. Now I didn't disassemble it completely because I wanted to have the pattern run over the complete rifle. So I have a basic green color that is perfect and in every little crack there is some green paint. So that I really like, but I wanted to have a pattern that goes over the complete rifle as one bigger pattern. So I took it downstairs again to my uh, painting surface and I used my sniper veil to create a small pattern on it. I used the same pattern on my M249, uh, but there I did it with some black paint, but I ran out of black paint, so I used some brown paint to break up the green blob part, like the blob part here in, in the middle. And after I painted it, I waited until it was dried a little bit. No, I, I didn't wait until it was dried. I just removed the veil because I wanted to see how it looked like. And when I removed it, I was really happy with the result. Uh, I was happy that I didn't use black because there was already a lot of black on the rifle. And with the brown color, it breaks up the green a little bit more. So I'm really happy with the result.
But even with that, you can go as crazy as you want. You can use a different pattern, you can use some stickers on it, you can use uh, a label on it, you can just uh, use a stencil on it that you can like paint over it and then remove the stencil so you have a nice logo on it. You can go as crazy as you want because my base layer is good. And with the good base layer, you can go bananas. Like you can really go bananas. You can put a banana on your rifle if you want to. But overall, I'm really happy with the result and I can't wait to take it back into a woodland environment. And this is how I painted my ICS arc. And this is the way I like to paint my rifles. I know there are a lot of different options out there to paint your rifle, but I wanted to show you how I do it and how I like to do it. But also, if you have a different way of painting your rifle, please let me know in the comments or send me a picture on Instagram, Discord or Facebook to show me how you painted your rifle or just show me how it looks after you painted it because it's really interesting to see what people like to do with their rifles. And if you have any questions about the process that I use to paint the rifle, just drop me something in the comments and I will reply at it as fast as possible. And if you liked the video, don't forget to like the video. And if you want to see more projects like this or different DIY projects, just go to my channel. There is a list with all my DIY projects. And with that, I want to end of the video. I want to wish you a really good day and I hope I see you next Monday for a new video. Bye!